Hi guys, welcome back to Anna Dialogue, the dialogue on analog music reproduction. In this episode, we're gonna face something of fundamental importance. Actually, one of the most important aspects regarding hi-fi reproduction, high-fidelity audio, audiophile audio. It's something that sometimes it's overlooked, but again, it's a fundamental aspect. And the good part, it's that it's free. Wanna know what it is? Let's take a look. Okay guys, as I said, this is the one of the most important, among the most important elements, aspects, processes to do to obtain a high quality audio reproduction. Actually, it's one of the best tweaks to enhance, to make your system really sing, blossom. What am I talking about? I'm talking about speaker, loudspeaker placement, positioning. Yes, because um, as I briefly said in a past video, which was, which was uh, I think, rather important, uh, an important video uh, discussing the philosophy and how you should listen, should listen the uh, music. Here's a link. Uh, I briefly mentioned a few aspects. And over time, I must say that these uh, must be corrected. <clears throat> yes, in fact, Today we're going to talk about a special kind of practice, of technique, of method to display your loudspeakers. Okay, before starting, I want to thank uh, the user Amit Mane, who highlighted this, um, this in very interesting process a few months ago. I experimented a little bit during this time, and I'm finally ready now to share this with you. So thank you, Amit Mane, for this indication. Uh, what are we talking about? We're talking about the Sumiko loudspeaker placement setup, uh, which has been then developed, enhanced, um, we could say somehow uh, developed in a better way, in a more effective way, by Bob Robbins. In fact, this uh, video is it's based on the work, the concept elaborated, invented, we could say almost, by Robbins. Bob, in fact, um, classifies, calls this technique the art of rational loudspeaker placement. Uh, obviously, I'm going to put all the links here below to his video and also his webpage because he invented this. I'm just reporting and summarizing somehow the process so you can do it at your home in your studio, wherever you are, very quickly. In fact, we're gonna go through five main steps in order to do this. Now, Rob, on his website, sells the little booklet, the PDF, wherever it is, which is kind of exp expensive, actually, to do it in detail. So there probably is a series of details, of nuances that do not come out in the uh, the YouTube video that I also linked here below in the video description, which uh, I'm basing my own video. So if you really want to get all the technical details, nuances and uh, aspects regard th regarding this um, method, please check that or buy, buy that um, manual if you want. I didn't do it, so I don't know how much details is in there, but I'm, I'm sure that all the passages are uh, much better explained uh, in, in all the possible situations you may have and encounter. Okay, so let's start. Before going through these five main steps, we need two things actually. One, I know it's annoying, but uh, if you really wanna obtain the maximum, you're gonna need this, a laser level, okay? Plus, you also need a uh, test song, uh, the correct song to um, to do this, which also uh, Ro Bob Robbins does use. The song is called The Ballad of the Runaway Horse by Jennifer Warnes, 
which is contained in the pretty much audio file um, album Do It's by Rob Wasserman. Okay, you're gonna find the link in the video description. Okay, so we can start. First step, loudspeaker initial positioning. You have to choose, if possible, the long wall in the room where you're gonna put your music system. Okay, not the short wall, the long wall. And the two speakers have to be parallel among themselves and parallel to the back wall. Just start with a normal distance, like two hands, three hands behind them on both sides, okay? So this is step number one. Proceeding, step number two, we're gonna start, uh, obviously with the song going uh, along, playing. You can also find the song on Spotify, so it's, it's better if you buy it, obviously, because it's not gonna be compressed. Otherwise, Spotify will do it, although some frequencies are gonna be kind of compressed. Okay, so, as I said, uh, step number two, you must slightly, slowly draw, bring the loudspeaker ahead, inch by inch. And what, you, what are you looking for? You're looking for a correct reproduction, obviously unbalanced. You're gonna hear all this on the left at a certain point because you're pulling the loudspeaker out. You get, you're looking for high quality, good reproduction of the lower frequencies, okay? Because there's a, a, a full bass there, which is being fingered. So you're gonna have excellent low uh, notes there. And you, you have to try to find the best reproduction in that sense. That's what that's what Rob says. So uh, Rob's, Rob says to experiment. I mean, when you think you find a good position, put a line of tape and continue bringing ahead the speaker. When you have three, four, five good place positioning places, try to go down to the one you prefer. There isn't a rule. I mean, the one you prefer. At that point, you're gonna do, we're gonna pass on step number three, and you're gonna start doing the same on loudspeaker, uh, on the opposite loudspeaker. In this case, loudspeaker on the right. You're gonna bring it ahead until at this point, it's the, you're gonna have a lock, uh, the, the, the center image is gonna be locked in, completely uh, well positioned. Obviously, the, it's, not a, it's not gonna be an optimal solution yet. But at this stage, we need to have a precise image in the center. We're almost looking as a monaural, a mono type of image. Because the two speakers need to work together, as Rob was highlighting in his video. That's the main point of, of, this, of this whole uh, method. To find, to work, to try to position the loudspeakers to work perfectly uh, is synchronous, in, in symbiosis without any uh, delay in the, in the timing. Otherwise, that's where you have uh, acoustic smearing and you have problems in a reproduction. So once you think at least you find the optim optimal solution by bringing the two loudspeakers ahead, we start to find, as Rob says, the magic with two aspects, but mainly step number four, rake angle. Oh yes, that's the big trick of the whole thing. You have to um, somehow, you have to figure out how with your spikes, with, with your little, um, hopefully you have some feet under your loudspeakers, otherwise you're gonna have, you have, gonna ha have to find other solutions to tilt your loudspeakers backwards. Yes, um, you need to do this for, uh, uh, Rob says less as possible until you find the right height of the uh, acoustic scene of the scenario of the reproduction of, of the um, of the sound stage because obviously the the mouth the, the the person the singer in this case jennifer needs to be perfectly centered but also high up that's one of the problems when we're just putting symmetrical um loudspeakers toe in etc that you just have sometimes a good image the, the reproduction of the music, the instruments, or the voice are very low, and that is not natural. So you really need to bring the loudspeakers a little backwards in order to send the, uh, the air pressure up above a little bit and expand in that way the, uh, 
the, 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 the scene, the, the sound stage, you have to use the laser level in order to achieve a symmetrical, in this case symmetrical, perfectly symmetrical rake angle of the loudspeakers. In this case, you can't have a different angle. You can't have a different inclination of the loudspeakers. Put the laser level once on, uh, on, on one loudspeaker and afterwards on the other until you match, you have the same level, uh, the same height, we could say, ideally behind your listening point, some uh, someplace behind your listening point. You have to find the correct um, identical position from two, the both loudspeakers in order to have the same rake angle. Okay, guys, that's important. At that point, step number five, you need to find the correct toe-in angle. One fundamental aspect that Rob keeps on saying, and it makes perfectly sense, it does not have to be symmetrical. Oh no, absolutely. One loudspeaker could be slightly toned in and the other one dramatically toned in or no toned in. I mean, that is completely something you have to discover on the field. Why is that? Because rooms change, change so much. It depends from the furniture, it depends from the walls, from the ceiling, from the carpet, all the other elements that's inside. So that is why, and then again, it makes perfectly sense, the two loudspeakers against all the common rules that we find in our manuals, in our videos, and whatever, wherever you're looking at, books, etc., do not have to be perfectly symmetrical. No, they can be positioned differently until your ears finally see, almost perceive, the perfect image which locks in place. At that point, you're gonna, you're gonna hear heaven. As Rob says, you're gonna feel the blossoming of audio. Of the, the, the acoustic scenario is gonna explode. Even if you move your head sideways, the image is not gonna move. It's not gonna follow you. That's a good, um, a good way to see if you did the right, the, the right setting. I mean, if you tilt your head and all of a sudden you feel like the voice of, the, of Jennifer is on the left, you're not in the right position. Same if you do it on the right. Whatever you do, regardless, the, 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 the image has to be blocked in the center, up high, not too much, at a natural level, obviously. So this is the huge, um, we could say, step ahead in loudspeaker positioning, because we, all of us all, all, always try to use our meters, our uh, air, uh, sound pressure level, etc., in order to have perfectly symmetrical loudspeakers. But our rooms are not symmetrical. So this does have a great effect on the sound reproduction of your system. Guys, if you really hit the, the, the precise point, the locking point, it's amazing. I, I still haven't gained perfect um, locking. I, I understand that because when I move, I still hear differences. But doing these changes, this positioning, this rate, uh, rate, rate um, these uh, tilting uh, loudspeakers and the different kind of toe-in positioning, oh boy, things change a lot. It's fantastic. Absolutely. So thank Rob. Thank uh, uh, Amen for all these uh, inspiring solutions. Okay, guys? Oh, I really hope you're going to try to do this in your system. Please let us know. If this is working, please let us know if you have other solutions, similar solutions or other uh, tips on this. And hope to see you soon, guys. Bye-bye.